Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today's part two of my Faster DLOOKUP series. If you haven't watched part one yet, go watch it first and then come on back. All right, so yesterday we made code in here to check to see if this person has any messages in the email archive table, the message archive table. So we use the old fashioned DLOOKUP method. Now let's do it again with the newer faster method. All right, so let's make another button. We'll do, uh, we'll call this one, uh, we'll just make call this one DLOOKUP. All right, we'll copy and paste that guy. We're gonna call this one the, uh, we'll call it the record set. Okay, because we're gonna use a different method. Ready, right click, build event. We're gonna do the same thing but we're gonna optimize this one for speed, okay? Built for comfort, built for speed. Okay, here we go. All right, so first we need dim RS as a record set. We're gonna set RS equals current DB dot open record set. And if you have multiple record sets you're gonna be open, make sure you dim a DB variable as database because it'll be faster than having to open up multiple database objects, okay? All right, so now we're gonna put an SQL statement in here that's kind of the same thing as what we did above. We're gonna go select, here's the important thing, top one. That tells the query engine, just get me one record. Otherwise, it's gotta just go through a bunch of records. No, I just want one record, okay? Then message ID, don't put a star here because a star says bring back all the fields. Again, slower, you just need one field, preferably, the primary key and definitely make sure it's indexed, which it should be if it's a primary key. All right, from message archive T, let's continue it to the next line. All right, where, uh, what do we got? Sender, it's the same thing as up here. I'm just gonna copy this guy. Copy all of that, paste, okay. Then, and here's another, oh, oh, and definitely make sure that this is indexed too. Index no duplicates if you need to. All right, you wanna index everything you wanna speed up. Indexing is extremely important. Watch this video if you wanna learn more about indexing and how important it is for a fast database. All right, so we got that, we're sender email. Da, da, da. Here comes the next important part, comma, DB open snapshot. And then close your parentheses up. Oh, I missed something, what did I miss? Oh, I got an extra quote there. I knew something was up when I didn't get my IntelliSense, right? When I when I hit this comma, er, there you go, type. And it doesn't give you the IntelliSense of the list here. There's DB open snapshot, there's DB open table, there's DB open Dynaset. There's a whole bunch of different ones. Uh, snapshot just means it's read only and it's the fastest one, okay? Normally, if you open a record set, it opens up in Dynaset mode so you can read and write records. Now for this example, all we care about is whether that returns a record or not. So if RS EOF, then let me copy the rest of this stuff up here. Wait, here we go. Er, copy, paste. If we're at the EOF or the BOF, but we'll be at the EOF if there are no records, you really only got to worry about BOF if you're going back and forth through a record set, right? If there's no records, BOF and EOF will both be true. No emails found, otherwise emails were found. Okay, now RS close. And remember, if you set it, you gotta forget it. And yes, that's on a t-shirt now, right? <laughs> set RS equals nothing. You gotta get rid of it, okay. Now, let's make sure this works. Save it, debug compile once in a while. Come back up here, hit the record set. But oh, I, I did some tests over here. Let me get rid of this stuff. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. <laughs> All right, ready, D look up. There we go, 0.34 seconds, hit the record set button. Boom, oh, we didn't put the timing in there. Well, it's working, emails were found. Let's put the timing in here. We gotta, we, gotta, we gotta track the timing too, right? We need T as a double and T equals timer at the beginning. So we'll do that just like we did before. All right, get rid of that empty space. And then at the bottom, we need the time elapsed. Okay, copy and then paste. All right, now we'll be able to see the difference in time. All right, let me get rid of this stuff again. In fact, let me do this. Before then, in the, the DLOOKUP right here, when we start this, I'm gonna put status box equals blank. So it clears the status box when we run the first one. All right, ready? Here we go. DLOOKUP. Oh, deep, oop, oop, oop. oh, okay, yeah, okay. It's on the main menu. Duh. My bad, this has to be forms, main menu, 
F status box. Okay, all right. I'm sure this time. Here we go. Ready? Debug compile. Go back over here. Click it. All right, 0.27, and then the record set, 0.10. Look at that. Much, much slower. Well, faster. The record set's faster than DLOOKUP. Let's do it again. Make sure it's not a quirk. 0.14, that was faster that time. 0.16, ah, that one, that's actually slower that time. It's, it's not going to be exact every time. It's just you're looking for long term because sometimes it will run a little slower. So let's do it again. DLOOKUP, 0.3, record set, 0.07. DLOOKUP, 0.13. 0.17, all right, 0 0.13, 0 0.10. Nine times out of 10, record set's gonna be a lot faster. See right there. Do you look up 0 0.23, 0 0.07, 0 0.32, 0 0.15, see? Sometimes you'll get a fluke, depending on what other stuff is going on in the, you know, the computer's memory. But usually, right, 0 0.15, 0 0.14, okay, sometimes they're about the same. Oh, that one's really fast. Ah, that was even faster. <laughs> 0 0.18, 0 0.06. Okay. So as you can see, generally, this one's a lot faster than this one. Generally. There are exceptions. But 99% of the time, I'd say that this is going to be slower than this. And there you go. All right. So we've seen it's faster. Now, for the nerds, let's talk some theory here. Even though both are doing the same job, the record set is faster. When you use DLOOKUP, Access has to parse your parameters, resolve references, compile the SQL under the hood, and then execute it every time. It does all of that every time. Even if you call it multiple times in a row, it doesn't reuse anything. It rebuilds the query plan every time. All right, convenience comes at a cost. And let's say we only, we only check to see if something existed or not. If you're, if you're pulling in values, Right, like if you actually wanted that ID, what the ID was right here, you could say status, you know, uh, the ID is, and you could say RS, uh, what do we got? Message ID, instead of emails were found. All right, so you can retrieve values here too. And now when you run it, you get the ID, right? The ID is 630996. One ID in that table happens to be that. Now, if you need four fields out of that table, if you need the ID, the first name, the last name, the email address, the message, the body, and you did five D lookups, that's going to be tremendously slow than opening up the record set once and pulling in five fields. Okay. Now, with the record set, we write the SQL ourselves. We say select top one, and the top one tells the database engine to stop after the first match. Combine that with DB open snapshot, which is optimized for read only. And we skip all the overhead of right tracking, record locking. It's just a lean, clean, fast. It's a one-way read. It's nice and quick. Best of all, we're talking directly to the DAO engine, the Data Access Objects engine, which is the, the engine underneath Access. There's no abstraction, no extra layers. It's faster. It's predictable. And it's better for repeat use. DLOOKUP is great for small things, but performance-wise, it doesn't scale. Every time you call DLOOKUP, Access compiles and runs a new query no reuse, no plan caching, no batching. You need five separate values. So that's five separate queries. A record set doesn't do that. We pass one SQL string with top one. Tell the database engine, just give us one row. Don't track changes. That cuts down on memory, record locking, disk IO. The result is you get faster execution. Now, if the record sets are better, why didn't Microsoft just optimize DLOOKUP like that? Well, the simple answer, it was never really designed to be fast. It was created for ease of use. It works great in control sources, macros, quick conditional logic. It doesn't require you to know SQL or DAO, which is record set language. But under the hood, it builds and tears down a full query every time. No reuse, no caching. That's fine for you know, small forms, once in a while queries. But when you start tracking them in on current events and you got tons and tons of them, it adds up fast, that little bit of overhead as we've seen. Like I said before, I tested this on my own main customer form. I replaced three or four D lookups with, uh, and D counts uh, with snapshot based equivalents. Before it took eight seconds to load, and now it's down to four. And I'm still working on it. I still got some optimizations to do. Four seconds to load a form is too long. I might offload some of that stuff. One specific lookup went from 0.38 seconds, like on an average. I ran it 100 times to get the average, and I dropped it down to 0.208. So that's a 48% improvement. 
I mean, it's not huge on its own, but you know, you stack a few of those up, and this is a, a form that I use all the time. And it, it you know, uh, little wins, they're, you know, make big saves, right? <laughs> How's that, how does that saying go? All right, so in summary, you don't have to rebuild your whole app, just clean up the high traffic areas. That's where DLOOKUP becomes a bottleneck. Snapshot records with SQL, top one, right? It's a little more work. But for power users and advanced developers, it's definitely worth it. This is something I do once in a while when I've got a form or a button that just runs slow. You know, I throw some timers in it. I see, okay, what's causing the bottleneck? And then I replace it. Now, at this point, you're probably thinking, well, the lookup is a nice function that's wrapped up and easy to use. That's a lot of work opening up this record set, remembering top one and the snapshot. Could, couldn't you make a function to do this instead of using DLOOKUP? Yeah, yeah, you could. And in the extended cut for the members, we're gonna do just that. We're gonna make a function called MyDLOOKUP. It's gonna look exactly like DLOOKUP to the outside world, but inside, it's gonna do all the cool stuff that we just did. And we're gonna go over my decount, which is a faster decount version that uses record sets to loop through the records instead of the, the slow decount. My D exists, which is optimized even further to just check to see if it exists or not. And then this is my favorite one, my D value list. This will allow you to send a comma separated list of fields. So you could say in one shot, give me first name, last name, email address, and it'll return them in an array. That's super cool, right? Here's mine that I built. And I'm gonna go over this one in the extended cut. And here's my run test button. I put it on the main menu. And you can see here, right? I got a, it loops and then it does run test. And here's run test down here. It does the same thing. First we test DLOOKUP. We're using the actual DLOOKUP function. Then we test my DLOOKUP and see if it's faster. Then we test DCount against my DCount. And then we test uh, to see if it exists, which is just a D lookup against my D exists. And then here's the value list thing. The value list is much, much faster because with D lookups, you have to make three separate lookups. Whereas my D value list, you send it a comma separated list like that. And then you get back an array, right? V, a variant array. Pretty cool stuff. It's been a while building this. I built this for myself first because I wanted it for optimizing my database. And then I'm like, I might as well throw it together and make a video out of it. Because I'm sure all of you can use some help optimizing your databases as well. Make them run faster, right? Well, that's what we're gonna do in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. We got like 400 of them now. There's lots of, you, know, you got stuff to watch for days, for days, weeks, and minutes and seconds, and all those other units of time. Gold members, you can download all this stuff and all of these functions will be in the code vault on the website. So if you're working, you know, two months from now and you're like, uh, I need that, uh, that faster D lookup, where is it? Just go to my website and type in D lookup and pfft, there it is, it's in the code vault. And of course, if you wanna sharpen your skills even further, I've got tons of developer lessons on my website. I'm up to like 52 now. I cover all kinds of stuff. We're working on class modules right now. That's some fun stuff. So check it out. There's a link. I put a link down below. But that is going to do it. That's your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. And members, I'll see you in the extended cut. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. 
It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject. And you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.